Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to go through another heat exchanger design exercise, but this time we're going to be using something besides just the simple double pipe heat exchanger. So the big difference with this one is the geometry. In this case, we're going to be using a shell and tube heat exchanger. A shell and tube has one fluid that is moving through the shell of the heat exchanger, while another fluid moves through a pipe or tube that is on the inside of that shell. The advantage of this is that we can have multiple passes of our pipe, which means that we can reduce the overall volume of our heat exchanger by just squishing multiple passes together. Now, in this case, we'll have our hot fluid flowing through the pipe, though it's possible for either fluid to be in either location. The last piece of geometry is going to be the actual diameter of our pipe here. And we're gonna say that that is just 0.1 meters. Now with the geometry defined, let's go ahead and move on and talk about the materials. So on the hot side or through the pipes, we're gonna have molten salt as our fluid. We are going to have an inlet temperature of 700 degrees Celsius and an outlet temperature of 600 degrees Celsius. And the salt we'll be working with is going to have a specific heat of 1800 joules per kilogram Kelvin. On the shell side or the cold side, we're going to have liquid sodium potassium metal. Now this is gonna have an inlet temperature of 100 degrees Celsius and an outlet temperature of 250 degrees Celsius. And our specific heat for the metal here is going to be 930 joules per kilogram Kelvin. So now with our materials out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the other pieces of information that we need to know. First off, our Q dot, our total heat transfer rate is going to be one megawatt. Secondly, we're gonna have an overall heat transfer coefficient, U, which is equal to 500 watts per meter squared Kelvin. So with these pieces of data, plus the plots that we have here, which I'll explain later, we should have enough information to figure out how long our heat exchanger pipe needs to be. So let's start off by finding our M dot values. So M dot is just gonna be our total heat transfer rate divided by our CH multiplied by our delta T, which is our TH in minus TH out. Plugging in those numbers, we end up with 5.55 kilograms per second. Then we can do the same thing for the cold side. This time we're gonna do TC out minus TC in. And those numbers give us 7.17 kilograms per second. We'll need these values later, but for now, let's go ahead and use our four temperatures in order to figure out what our delta T value is. It may not be as clear as when we're using this for the double pipe example, but we'll use the same delta T calculations that we would for a counterflow heat exchanger. We'll end up with a delta T at the exit, which is our TH out minus TC in, minus TH in minus TC out. That's gonna be divided by the natural log of the ratio of those same two differences. Now plugging our values in, we end up with 475 Kelvin, which in this case is the exact same thing as the arithmetic mean. So next we can plug that into our Q dot equation. So Q dot is going to be our overall heat transfer coefficient multiplied by our area, multiplied by a correction factor times delta T log mean. This correction factor comes from our chart over here. Our next step is to calculate the R value and then what I'm calling the pipe effectiveness for our heat exchanger. Our R value is gonna be the ratio of our total heat capacity for the pipe divided by that in the shell. And for our example here, that ratio is 1.5. Now the pipe effectiveness, I'm gonna call P, and P is equal to the pipe inlet temperature minus the pipe outlet temperature divided by the shell inlet temperature minus the pipe outlet temperature. 
I'm calling this the effectiveness because this is essentially a ratio of the total heat transfer in the pipe compared to the maximum possible heat transfer in the pipe. And it turns out I messed up our outlet and inlet here. So I'll fix those and we'll be ready to go. So our pipe, of course, is the hot side and our shell is the cold side. So this will be 600 minus 700 divided by 100 minus 700. So that'll give us a value of 2 ninths or 0 0.22. And that gives us our x axis location. So our 1.5, we expect to be somewhere in between the 1 and the 2. And then we're talking about a p value of, we expect a value of, let's call our correction factor 0 0.98. So finally, we get to plug our numbers in down to our q equation. So our u was 500, our f was 0 0.98, our delta t was 475, and our u and our Q dot was one megawatt. So that leads us to an area of 4.3 meters squared. And then of course we know that area is also going to be just pi times D times L for the outside of the pipe, which lets our length be 13.7 meters. So the total length of our pipe inside our shell is going to need to be 13.7 meters to match the temperatures and Q dot that we need. Now, the process here was very similar for what we did with the double pipe heat exchanger. The primary difference is just that we had to calculate this correction factor to accurately represent the fact that we are using a more complex geometry. Besides that, we also simplified our calculation of the total resistance because you were just given a overall heat transfer coefficient. In any case, I hope this was helpful, and I hope you're ready to go tackle some heat exchanger designs with some slightly more complex geometries.